So a pirate walks into a bar, and the bartender <laughs> says, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. What happened to you? You look terrible. Well, well, what do you mean, says the pirate, I'm fine. And the bartender says, well, what about that wooden leg of yours? The last time I saw you, you had both legs. And the pirate says, well, we were in a battle at sea, and a cannonball hit me leg, but me surgeon fixed me up, and I'm great now. And the bartender said, okay, well, what about that hook? The last time I saw you, you had both arms. And he said, oh, yeah, well, we were in another battle, and we boarded the enemy ship. And I had me sword fight. I had a sword fight, and me hand was cut off. But me surgeon fixed me hand up, and I'm really doing great. And the bartender said, okay, well, also the last time I saw you, you had both eyes, and now you have a patch over your eye. And the, the pirate said, oh, yeah, well, when we were out to sea, I looked up, and there was a flock of birds com coming right over the top of me, and one of them pooped in me eye. Arg. <laughs> and, they, and the bartender said, okay, but a bird pooping in your eye isn't going to cause your eye to come out. And the, bar <laughs> the pirate says, well, I wasn't really used to me hook yet. <laughs> Moral of this story <laughs> is that sometimes change is painful <laughs> until we know how to work with it. So clearly today we are talking about change. Um, and, you know, change is just the order of the day for us all the time. We change from an infant to a baby to a toddler to an adolescent to a teenager, to a young adult, to a man or a woman, to a mature adult, to a senior citizen. We change from a child to a student, to a friend, to a neighbor, to a coworker, to a spouse, to a parent. We change our hairstyles, we change our hair colors, we change our residences, we change our churches, our jobs, our furniture, we change our cars, we change our lifestyle, we change our schools. We change our friends, and sometimes we even change our spouses, right? Well, I hope we change our underwear, yes. <laughs> if that's a question, I'm wondering, no. We change our minds, we change our hearts, we change our morals, we change our values, we change our ideals, we change our tastes. And the world around us changes all the time. I know just in our lifetime, Time, the changes that we have experienced, the changes in technology, uh, the seasons change, landscape change, weather changes, um, weather pattern changes. The paradox is the one thing that never changes is that we are going to experience change. The challenge is that um, we resist it. Change is one of the things that, um, for most of us, that we really resist. Could we pretty much agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. So on Wednesday night in class, I, I was just telling the class, I said, you know, I'm 62 years old and I am really, I'm so grateful because everything is so good in my life. And I have to admit that even as I thought about saying that, do you ever have that feeling, that niggling in your mind like, oh my gosh, if I voice this, something's gonna change. <laughs> and you don't usually think it's gonna be a good change. <laughs> You know, it's like, if I actually voice this. And on Thursday, I got diagnosed with shingles in my arm and my hand. <laughs> and so this was an interesting change um, for me to experience. Um, thank goodness for me, it's a temporary change. But I did want you to know why I'm wearing a black glove today. I'm not trying to be like Michael Jackson. I cannot do the moonwalk on the carpet. So <laughs> um, anyway, that's why, that's why I'm wearing this. So... Um, so the reality, though, is there's many changes that we just openly embrace um, in our lives. From a, um, a book called The Five Major Pieces to the Life Puzzle, um, he divines two ways changes occur in our lives, and one of them is out of inspiration. That would be success, um, things like prosperity, health, love, getting married, having a baby, graduating from high school or college, starting a new job that we love, moving into a new house, starting a business. Um, these are things that either we are inspired to do or inspire us. 
And you know, the rea with these changes, I mean, there's sometimes a little bit of an apprehension, a little bit of anxiety of the unknown, but these changes are, you know, we move into these changes kind of excited about things. Now, one of the things that I recognize is that just because they're good changes to us doesn't mean that they're necessarily good changes to everyone around us. And so an example of that is Paul and I bought a house together last year. Uh, but when I had to tell my grandkids at, that I was selling the house that I had been in for 10 years, especially my oldest grandson, he fell apart because that was all he had ever known. So it's the recognition that um, I'm so sorry. I have my eight-year-old grandson, and he is looking at, out at me through my office window right now. <laughs> He's just going, go back in there. Get back in there. <laughs> he comes out in waves. Anyway, his older brother got really freaked out by it. So it's just recognizing that even if it's a good change for us, it may not always be a good change for the people around us. But these good changes, I have an acronym for it, and it is come have a new glorious experience. And that's what it feels like. You know, when we, when we, they're inspired changes, they're things that um, we're looking forward to. And we have changes that come not so much out of inspiration, but changes that are kind of thrust upon us. And, um, you know, sometimes it feels as though we are totally out of control of these, and a lot of them we are out of control of. You know, it's a death of a loved one or a divorce, a loss of a job, um, uh, the economy tanks, um, finding out that our child is a drug addict or an alcoholic. And these are changes that we certainly don't feel are like, come have a new glorious experience, right? You know, that, that doesn't feel like that at all. But we're going to talk more um, about that. Dr. Roger Teal, in his book, uh, This Life is Joy, he tells the story of a man who gave himself the gift of going on a fishing trip uh, to Scotland. And so he's out there, he's on the fishing boat, he's all by himself, and he has got his, his dream has been fulfilled. When all of a sudden he sees that there's something that is lingering underneath the boat, and whatever this something it is, it's really large, and then he realizes that it's at the bow of the boat. And in an instant, the boat is lifted up out of the water. He, he couldn't see you know, what it was that was doing it, but all he knew that his boat was rising higher and higher. And then all of a sudden, the boat went one way, the man went the other way, and as he flew through the air, he looked down and was truly in shock because there he saw the jaws of the Loch Ness Monster. You can tell this is a true story, right? <laughs> spread wide open and ready to gobble him up. So the man screamed out, God, God, please help me, please help me. And then instantly, everything kind of went into a freeze frame. The man is up in the air, his eyes are wide open, the jaws are wide open, and then he hears this booming voice. And it's God, and God says, this is God. And my child, you've never called upon me before. In fact, I didn't even think that you believed in me. To which the man replies, well, give me a break, God. Just a moment ago, I didn't believe in the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> Roger shares that this is how many of us see change, as a monster lurking beneath the surface, ready to just throw us into chaos and to gobble up our well-ordered lives. But he says, when we look at change this way, we see it as an enemy. And when we see it as an enemy, we do everything that we can to resist it. Anybody ever resist change? No. <laughs> and it always cracks me up when I think about resistance, because it's like we're playing this game with ourselves, as though somehow, by resisting it, we think it's just not going to be there. But it's, you know, kind of like that fighter that's like going all around us saying, hello, hello, I'm here. And when you're ready to look at me and ready to accept me, that's, that's where your point of power is. Um, is, you know, in that acceptance. Because, you know, I thought about even with the shingles that, you know, I'm affirming health and wholeness, but the reality is, is today this is what's going on. And I have to accept that, and I have to allow my body the rest and everything that it needs because of that. So it's just important that we can stop for a moment and, and look at it and instead of just resisting it. So 
this kind of change, my acronym is CRUD. Here's another god-awful negative experience. <laughs> and, and we felt that way, right? <laughs> oh my god, what's happening um, right now? So Robert Brummett, in his book, Finding Yourself in Transition, this is a fantastic book, Finding Yourself in Transition, by Robert Brummett, um, because it gives you, um, it really helps you to understand what is taking place in you and how you can better navigate these kind of big changes in life. He says, indeed, every change is a type of death, a death to an old way of living or being. Yet ironically, change, a dying to the old, is one of the defining characteristics of growth. Herein lies the paradox. To live is to grow, to grow is to change, and to change is to die to the old. And you know, I realized um, in looking at this that no matter what kind of change it is, whether it's a come have a new glorious experience or the other kind of change, that there is a dying to the old, that there is, that, that we're letting go of something in order for there to be something else. You know, even if, um, um, you know, if you're a single person and you're going to move into a relationship, you're letting go of something of what was in order to move in to what is. So there's always a giving up of something to move into something new. We just like to be in control of that, don't we? <laughs> we, we like to be the ones that are make, making those choices. Um, so, um, Dr. Roger Teal from his book, uh, This Life is Joy, and this is I'm going to be sharing from him now, um, says that the biggest problem with change is that we were never taught how to deal with it. You know, it would have been nice to have a Change 101 course um, as we were growing up. And I think that's one of the things I like about Unity is that we do try to present things, uh, practical ideas, that's what I love, it used to be called Practical Christianity. Um, practical ideas as to how we can navigate through these things called change. So Roger tells us that life is a never-ending river of change. Um, we deal with small changes, but then we also get to deal with what he calls the graduate level changes. How many of you have had graduate level changes in your life? Yeah, I mean, you have grown a lot through uh, these changes. And of course, topping this list is anything that has to do with loss, you know, loss of a career, um, loss of a personal or physical capacity, loss of a dream, but most especially the loss of a loved one. Um, and what he tells us is that change is not an enemy to us. It's not an enemy to life, and it's not an enemy to God. It's, it's the way life is. And there's so much opportunity for us to grow and to expand and to become more um, as we go through changes in our lives. And a lot of times, what happens when people aren't aware of that, that instead of expanding, they shrink and they become victims to the changes in their lives, they become powerless. And we're anything but powerless, right? We are, we are about standing in our power, we're about you know, expanding and becoming more. So Roger gives us three essentials, essential concepts to change 101. The first essential concept is that we have to realize what change actually is, and it is that change is, um, is birth. Change is a birth. How many of you women in here have given birth? Pretty easy, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say if you had drugs, maybe, but... <laughs> At birth is anything but easy. I mean, birth is painful. I don't care how long if you were in labor, whether it was two hours or 24 hours, it feels like it was weeks <laughs> to be in labor. But what we know is it's through that process, through that, through that pain, that, you know, new life emerges. And that is really the opportunity that we have when we experience these changes that uh, what, uh, have been thrust upon us. In the book that we're using on Wednesday night called Callings, there is a, a Belgian physicist, Ilya Prigogine, 
I mean, that's not actually how you say it, but I don't know how you say it, who was awarded the Nobel Prize for his theory of what he calls dissipative structures, part of which contends that friction is a, fund a fundamental property of nature and nothing grows without it. Not mountains, not pearls, not people. It is precisely the quality of fragility, he says, the capacity for being shaken up that is paradoxically the key to growth. Any structure, whether it at the molecular, chemical, physical, social, or psychological level, that is insulated from disturbance is also protected from change, and it becomes stagnant. And not good things happen when, when we're stagnant, right? Think about water that's stagnant. You know, we want to constantly be moving and growing. He says, we must therefore be willing to get shaken up to submit ourselves to the dark blossomings of chaos in order to reap the blessings of growth. Um, so instead of fixating ultimately on what is breaking down, what is falling away, what Roger says is that this concept gives us the opportunity to see that we are pregnant with, with possibility and potential. And, and, and it's so true because all of us can look back in our lives and we can see how this change here led to this and that this change here led to this and this change here led to this, right? We can connect the dots in the past. And it's important for us to be able to do that so that when these changes come in our life that we can, after we've felt what we need to feel with it, um, that we can, you know, um, more quickly go to that knowing that, you know what, somehow, 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 this is going to work for something good, for something greater as well. Um, he reminds us it is absolutely appropriate to grieve these changes. And I, w I really want you to understand that it is appropriate to grieve the changes. It's appropriate to feel whatever you feel as you go through these changes. That is part of our natural human experience. You know, when our beloved Cheryl passed away just a few weeks ago, and it's not over. And, and honestly, my doctor asked me, has there been anything stressful recently in your life? And it was just like, oh my gosh, my dear friend and colleague, unexpectedly passed away and there was a lot to that and there still is um, so just just don't do this <laughs> um, but you know it's okay to feel um, what you feel and then we move from that point essential concept number two he says that change is a vehicle for every person's evolution and awakening. If things remain forever the same in our lives, there would be no impetus for growth. That change is actually a mask that transformation wears. It's, it's that, again, it's really about opportunity. Um, and, and in every experience that we have in life, it's about opportunity. And remember, you guys, that life is about experience. You know, there's no failure, there's only feedback in our lives. And when we can look at life from that perspective, that there is no failure, that we can just go, oh, hey, wow, this is interesting. How can I look at this and how can I move forward from here? It's simply an experience. Just some experiences are harder than the others. Essential concept number three, um, Always remember that the divine is conspiring for our highest and for our good. And, you know, grace is that. Grace is that something that goes out before us and prepares the way for us. Even before we have even stepped into anything in our lives, grace has already gone out before us. And the sooner that we can get to that place of saying, I don't understand this, my heart is broken, I'm scared, I'm angry, I'm disappointed, whatever is going on there, but God, Spirit, Holy Spirit, divine mind, whatever you want to call this, I, you know, I know, I know that you've got me in this. And I know that I'm going to know what the next right step is to take. I know that I'm going to be guided. That we open ourselves up and surrender and give ourselves over to this something greater. We will be guided. We will be healed. I know, and many of you know that in 2014, my husband passed away very unexpectedly. And I'm going to tell you that experience was beyond anything I have ever experienced in my life. And I went into 
deep grief for a very long time. And in fact, I had to take um, six, six weeks off, um, like in the, in the summer that year, because I, I was having a hard time just handling that, that big change. You know, but ultimately, what I knew, and I've shared this very openly, and he was very open, Sean was an alcoholic, and I knew that he was free from that. He was free from this disease that he could not get under control, and I could finally line up with that. But also, it opened up such opportunity for me in my life. And like I said, I'm, I'm more content in my life today with, with my beloved than I ever have been in my entire life, and so I'm so grateful for how things ultimately turned out. I've also shared with you that um, seven years ago, my, um, my great nephew, uh, who was 11 years old at the time, uh, passed away from a rare childhood cancer. And as you can imagine, this was devastating to the entire family. But here's the thing about his mom. Um, and she was only in her, you know, maybe late 20s at this point. But she had the most positive attitude. And instead of shrinking from this experience, she decided to use this experience for the greater good of everyone. And she is now on staff at the hospital in the oncology department where her son spent a good portion of the last few years of his life. And she is an advocate for these children, and she's an advocate for these families. And they have put together numerous fundraisers to raise awareness um, on getting, you know, getting this figured out. You know, I think we all agree that there needs to be more funding in finding out um, cures to cancer, period. But um, in childhood cancer, and, and my point being is that you know, the scripture says that all things work together for good for those who love God. And it's, you know, to me, for those who love God, it's, it's for those who are willing to finally say, you know what, this is the worst possible thing that could ever, I could ever imagine happening. But when I can breathe again, I am willing to be used. And, you know, what's one of our favorite songs, Use Me, O oh God, I stand for you and here I'll abide as you show me all that I must do. And we have that opportunity be, to be transformed. And we have that opportunity to be used for greater purposes um, because of what has happened to us. And I'm going to tell you that's a much better road to travel than to travel the road of I'm never going to be OK again, quit living life, quit you know, embracing life. And, and you come over here and you say, you know what? This is horrible. And I'm going to feel what I feel. But here I am. And I trust, I trust God. I trust, I trust the universe. And you know, when it comes to um, the transition of someone through, through physical death, what do we believe? And can we lean into that? Into that knowing that there is life beyond this physical realm. <laughs> that this isn't it. And we know that. We know it in the core of our being, that this body is a temporary suit that we wear for a period of time, but that which is our true essence, it goes on. And we may not be able to see that, but we do know it. It's been proven to us over and over and over again. So I want to close with um, a quote by Ernest Holmes. He says, nature will not let us stay in one place too long. She will let us stay just long enough to gather the experience necessary to the unfolding and advancement of the soul. Nature demands change in order that we advance. When change comes, we should welcome it with a smile on the lips and a song in the heart. Um, so you may not be able to um, embrace it that quickly with a, a smile and a, and a song, but I promise you that if you will connect the dots <coughs> of your past, and you will see all of these changes that you probably thought were the worst thing possible at the time have turned out to be something that has grown you and that has been for the better of your life and others' lives. You will be able to get there much, much sooner. And so I.